Hi everybody, I'm just off an interview that Bernard Brogan had with a guy called Rory Griffith who's from the IIBN board in New York and he shared a range of very interesting insights about how you transfer skills from sport to business. So I thought I'd share them with you. The first one is the reality of being a team player. He said it's really easy to talk about being that team player if you're somebody who's getting the playing, you're getting the glory, you're getting the goals and so on but he said it's a very different story when you're sitting on the bench, when you're also not uh, being able to play on certain match days because of injuries, when you are the 31st player on the panel and so on. Then he says, you really have to think then about selflessness, about the team dynamic and so on. And I think that there is a lot to be, you know, there's a lot to consider there when it comes to business, particularly when it comes to hard times and what, what being a team pay- player is really all about. The second thing he, he said is everybody has their metrics, but a leader cultivates energy around a vision. So he said in the company, there are various people who have different KPIs. He mentioned IT and sales and marketing and so on. But he said a really good leader creates a vision and then shows everybody what their role is around making that vision happen. He particularly mentioned his previous manager, Pat Gilroy, was very, very good at doing that, where he said he always knew where he wanted to go, but he was happy to bring in the ideas of the team and was open to their ideas. And Bernard said he reflects that in his business today. What he does is that he talks to his staff all the time around different ideas and innovation and so on, so that they can bring those ideas to the table. He also spoke about how different leaders bring different things to an organization over time, whether that's a football team or whether that's a business. So he spoke about when he got his debut uh, from Pillar Caffrey back in 2007, he said he was well ahead of his time. That Dublin was the first county to have their own fitness and conditioning coach and also he was the first guy to bring mindfulness into play and he said he doesn't get the credit that he deserves from putting all of that in place because then future leaders could actually build on that. Now we contrasted that to Jim Gavin who was all about believing in the process. He truly believed that if you had the right person on the right day in the right frame of mind and gave them the jersey that the process would unfold. And also Bernard told us the story, but he said like he was always getting, being a forward, he was always being in front of the goal, or regular being in front of the goal. And he said he'd be thinking, okay, don't hit the goalie, don't hit the goalie. Where would it go? Straight into the goalie's chest. So he said Jim Gavin really taught him how to take time and to reflect and to be calm under pressure. And while it sounds like you can't do that when you've got seconds, he told us about a very small technique that he had called responding rather than reacting. Reacting is when you just react to the conversation, everyone shouting and roaring and everything else. But he said when you respond is when you stop, you take a second, you understand that you have time, you place the ball low and fundamentally you do get the goals and it does make a big difference. And he said how that worked for the last 10 goals that he had for Dublin, um, which is a, a serious feat in its own way. He also spoke about Jim Gavin, who espoused the idea of the performance trinity. So he said, like, what are the three key things that really matter to you? And in Bernard's case, he said playing for Dublin, his family and his work as an entrepreneur. So Jim's whole point was that if you don't have balance between the three of them, if any one of them is not getting the attention they deserve, or if any one of them is getting too much attention, it can affect the other two. So he spoke about that and how they were constantly encouraged to establish that balance among all of those. Now, also in response to a question about, you know, working from home and the changes brought on in business through COVID and so on. um, He was asked then a question around, like, how do you how do you overcome difficult times? And particularly when you're when you might be the person going through them or if you're bestowing them on other people. So he said one of the key things that he does is to show vulnerability to build trust. As he said, if if you have to have that real hard, authentic conversation or if you have to give the feedback that may not be easy to hear, he said it's important to show vulnerability by pointing out first how you might have struggled at various stages along the way and how you overcame that problem and how you were in the position that ultimately the other person might find themselves in. The last point he mentioned is actually not something we always hear from sports people. Well, I'm speaking personally anyway. And that is that he said a lot of people analyze failure and the decompose that they did wrong and so on like that. But he said there's a lot of value in analyzing success is that success can be a very good teacher if we take the time to understand what made us successful uh, along the way. And in particular, he said there that, you know, a lot of people celebrate success and they enjoy it, but then they move on. And he said there's a real lost opportunity there. So there was a lot, a lot that, it, that he shared in those 40 minutes of a discussion. And I hope this has been helpful for you. And also, if you want to find out more about Bernard, his philosophy and his principles for success, his new book, The Hill, is now out in all good bookshops. And I'll put a link in this post as well where you can look at that. Thanks, everyone. Bye.